I began climbing at about 14 or 15 years old in the San Fernando Valley at Stony Point, and I'd never really been anywhere beyond that for about a year, and then I went out to Joshua Tree and kind of blew my mind. In Yosemite, I really had no clue what it looked like. This was probably 1972. I don't even remember any photos. I think I had seen something about Warren Harding in 1970 climbing the Don Wall. Like instead of graduating high school, I, I, I ended up with some friends that were going to the valley and came through 41 from Fresno. Came through the tunnel and there was Yosemite. My work was really directly inspired by Tom Frost and Glenn Denny's work. So Glenn Denny photos and Tom Frost photos were interspersed throughout uh, all the media at that time because they were the two main photographers. And I didn't even know who they were, but you see these images and you go, oh my God. They were doing first ascents on El Cap and other places around Yosemite. The difference was they brought a camera with them and they knew how to use it. It enabled people to dream about doing El Cap and Half Dome and some of these other climbs. The concept that I can read really early on is that you're a participant in this journey along with your friends with the fact that I, I understood it. They were kind of speaking the same language I was, or I obviously was speaking the same language they were. And, and looking at the climbing photographs and looking at their portraits of, of climbers, I could see that these were their partners and I knew it was their partners simply because I knew who Tom Frost was. I knew what he meant to, to Royal Robbins. And so as my own path in, in climbing photography um, went on, I could see how that relationship with those people in those photographs became more paramount than the actual photographs themselves. And at that point, I think my work began to transcend. When I started making Stone Master photographs, I kind of realized that maybe that this was my calling. My connection with Yosemite climbing and my connection with Yosemite photography or climbing photography is kind of deep. I think that a lot of the photographers that come here and work also feel that connection. I know a lot of these guys and so I've, I've talked to them and they also feel that connection and they also look at what came before them. Part of the thing we're trying to express here at this gallery is to look at what's been collected and try to think about it as a continuation. and. To that end, the, the kind of photography that I like the most is the photograph that was made between friends. Those are the hardest ones to find sometimes. It, it, sometimes it's easy to find professionals and that's kind of a, a, a beautiful photograph. But the problem I have with a professional photograph versus a photograph made between friends is a uh, professional you always know there's a camera between you and that subject or the subject knows there's a camera between you and the photographer. Whereas with a friend, the camera's just up for a moment and then it's gone. It's almost as if it was just a, a pause in the conversation. 
My work with Dean Potter was kind of a really personal journey for me. It was really based on a friendship more than anything. Dean could have worked with anyone. He enjoyed working with me more because of our friendship. We really got along well and we were able to do things at its own pace. And I was independent enough that I allowed him to have his independence. So I never really put too much input to what we were doing. I let him have his vision and then I simply refined the vision. And, and it, you know, it was that way all along where it was this kind of adventure. We would hang out and there would be other monkeys hanging out with us. and. Dean had sort of a vision to do something and everybody sort of had their role in, in making that vision happen, but it was more, we were all kind of doing it because it was the adventure of what was actually going on, what he was going to do. But yeah, I loved that guy and I think he loved me and we were like, it was, it was an exciting ride and it kind of, kind of arced the same time that the monkeys were happening and uh, I miss him every day and the photographs that I made even though they're as soulful as I can make them, I don't think they really express fully how, how much he actually meant to me and a lot of people. So yeah, that's one of, the, one of the blessings and curses, I guess, of making these kind of photographs is you get so involved with the people you're making the photographs and then if they pass, then like Sean Leary, like Roberta Nunez, like, uh, you know, John Backer, like a lot of people in my photographs, they're gone. You make a photograph that you think that really touches how you feel about them, and you have that to always look at. You know, feelings aren't facts. They're simply part of a memory, and that's something that's changed. When you look in that photograph, from that, maybe for a moment, you can get the feeling that is a fact in that moment. So that's why I really do try to um, make my photographs as if I'm having a conversation with that subject, with that climb, or with that landscape, whatever. We're fully engaged with each other because I always want to remember that moment. And I always want to try to express something about the, my subject matter. So, um, so there you have it. Dean's big on you know, climbing photography as an art and not just as a documentation. Not only has great photos on his own, but he also has an eye for picking the photographs that um, some of the 60s photographers did and other photographers, and he can clean those photos up and really make them look good. And When you see things presented in the way that we are going to present them and are currently presenting them, you understand how this is the art of our culture.